How's it going, lawmen? It's me, Neloth, as always, and today I have a very special, new, and interesting video that has never been done before in the history of YouTube. I'm going to be doing a ranked video where I rank all of the Jarls in Skyrim. Now, I promise you, I totally did not copy this from another YouTube channel named Longbrow Gaming. I totally did not watch his entire video and go, yeah, I want to make that myself now. I promise you that is not a thing that I did. Now, before we start this totally original video idea that I have created myself, me, myself, I, no one else, I want to clarify that this is my opinion, meaning that you could probably disagree with me, and if you do, I'd like to hear uh, what placements you think each Jarl should be in your opinion. And I will read your comment and tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> um, and also, I will not be judging each of these Jarls based off of their political beliefs. I am only going to be judging these Jarls based off of their competency as a leader and their moral character. Now, with that being said, let's go straight into the video! Number 17. Jarl Layla Lawgiver. So, you may be quite surprised that I put her last instead of someone like Sidgear, but she's the worst Jarl in my opinion because she's pretty incompetent, gullible, and selfish. She talks about how much she cares about the people, but when talking to her steward, who said she prepared an escape in case the city is attacked, she responds by saying it's only right that the leader be spared and damn the rest of the people, which is pretty selfish. On top of this, the ones Layla refers to as advisors are corrupt. Both her steward and Maven Blackbriar are extremely corrupt, just to name two. And she's also very gullible for believing in them at face value. She is also really stupid because her son Saland, I think that's how you say his name, had spoken out against the Stormcloaks and she truly believes that Saland is actually bewitched and knows not what he says and talks to the court wizard about whether he's healthy or not because she genuinely believes something is corrupt in him. Uh, which just makes her a moron and awful. So overall, she is not corrupt, but she is even worse than that, which is why she's at the bottom. I hate her. She's dead to me. Number 16. Sidgear. This surprises no one. He supports the Thalmor. He plays with bandits. Uh, he lets his steward do all the work and he does nothing. Uh, he's a spoiled brat. No one likes him. Not a single person I think has ever said a good thing about Sidgear. He sucks. So, let's move on. Number 15. Scald the Elder. Now, Scald is just really a Stormcloak fanatic that believes everything revolves around the Civil War and Ulfric and Talos, like the resurgence of the dragons. Now, I know I wouldn't get political, and I'm not basing him off of the fact that he is just a Stormcloak supporter. I'm basing it off the fact that he's this fanatic that, because of his views, is more of a hindrance to his city than a boon because he gives too much of his guard to the Stormcloaks and not enough to defend his already poorly defensible, unwalled city. He completely ignores his advisors and he treats his servants as jokes. And all of his people view him as a brat that never grew up. So while he's not corrupt per se, unlike some of the others I'm going to be mentioning soon, he's not good at all. So, yeah. Number 14. Jarl Courier. Now, Courier isn't the worst Jarl, and it's not his fault that he inherited a shitty city like Winterhold. But his hatred for the elves and the College of Winterhold do nothing but keep the city in ruins. All he does is whine all day, brainwash his son into hating elves in the college, and doesn't do anything to fix his city. Courier is only this low on the list just because he's just a racist and he hates the college and he's just ignorant. And if he made peace with the college, maybe the city could become better, but I don't know. He's just low on the list. He's boring, he sucks, he whines. That's it. Number 13. Thongvor Silverblood. Yup, that's him, a typical racist Nord. However, he is a racist Nord that belongs to the richest family in Markarth, that owns the bank and Sidna Mind, a family that is also very deeply corrupt. The Silverblood family secretly works with the Forsworn and mercenaries to remove the competition, 
And if you've ever played the Forsworn Conspiracy Quest, the Silver Blood family will literally kill an innocent man and frame you for the murder. Thongvor wasn't personally involved in that, but he's an accomplice, and I'm pretty sure he had the same motivations as his brother, who was the one who framed you. However, while he is absolutely horrible and just the worst for Mark Arth, there is someone that is actually better than Thongvor, but similar to him. Number 12, Maven Blackbriar. Everyone knows Maven. She's extremely powerful and, again, extremely corrupt. I'm not even going to discuss her incredibly fucked up family tree. Not even going to. But regardless of if she is Yara or not, she still controls the entire city. It's just a formality, just a title, if she does become Yara. She is only high on this list because while she is awful, you know, mean, horrendous, kills people, stuff like that, she's still at least smart and competent, and you also work with her a bunch if you're part of the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood, so she's up here. Uh, she's horrible, but there's nothing you can do because she is essential and awful. <laughs> Number 11, Sorley the Builder. Now, Sorley is Morthal's replacement Jarl, and she's probably one of the more generic Jarls that are on this list. Before being a Jarl, she ran a mining operation in Stone Hills as an overseer. Yes. And she may possibly care about her people, we don't know much about her from dialogue, but from the dialogue, she seems to be more interested in claiming power and ruling a bigger city like Riften, and so that's why she's where she's at here. She is the only... Interestingly enough, she is the only potential Jarl that actually doesn't live in the city, because she lives in Stone Hills first. She's not bad, she's not a bad Jarl, but she's, as the kids would say, mid. She is very mid, and it is what it is. Number 10, Jarl Igmund of Markarth. Now, personally, I kind of like him, I kind of respect him. He seems to have the severity of the Markarth threat in mind, even though he is ignorant to how powerful they truly are. People bash on him because he's not too worried about the dragon threat in Markarth, but his reasonings are valid with it being built in the mountainside and the whole city, be city being made of stone. And it's not like he's taunting the dragons to come. Unlike Thongvor, it's uncertain whether he actually cares about his people, but he seems honorable to me from the dialogue that I've seen and heard from him. And while he is aligned, kind of technically, with the Thalmor, he knows they can't be completely trusted. So he's not that naive. He's naive, but not that naive like Scald the Elder. He's just a mid-Jarl in a pretty shitty situation. Number 9. Elisif the Fair. Jarl Elisif is a woman I feel extremely bad for. She was never supposed to become Jarl and was only supposed to be queen to Jarl Torig, but after his death at the hands of Ulfric, she was forced to take the throne. And she's not the best leader and seems a little bit self-absorbed in herself with parades and dresses. But I do believe that she does care for her people as seen in certain dialogue. She is a Jarl that can easily be taken advantage of, especially by people like General Tullius. And leaves most of the operations and handlings of the city to her advisors like Falk Firebeard. But not because she doesn't care like Sidgear but because she's simply ill-equipped to handle the situation of being a Jarl. Number 8, Ulfric Stormcloak himself. Now, it's probably a little late to mention this, but I am someone who typically sides with the Imperials. However, please know that what I am going to be saying is as unbiased as I can possibly be. Ulfric is an individual that cares very very deeply about his Nord brothers and sisters. However, everyone else is left in the dust. He's a man who is so focused on the Civil War, he doesn't really attempt to fix or renovate his sad ruin of a city, which is mentioned by many people in the city and some of the sailors that come into the docks. He is also very content to let the Dunmer live in squalor in the glorious Grey Quarter, and forces all of the Argonians to live on the docks, which is pretty fucked up. Now, if he wins the war, he could possibly make for a good High King and ruler of Windhelm. 
However, during the war, he is less so and seems to care more about the throne of being High King than he does his own people. Now, he's not bad by any means, and if you listen to his dialogue, it is true that he does care a lot about his people. However, he is number eight simply just because, you know, he's not the greatest when it comes to being a ruler. Great general and great warrior, but ruler in Windhelm, I think less so. Uh, he's very supportive for Nords, but not anyone else, but you've heard that before. I'm not saying anything new. Next, Jarl. Number seven, Dengir of Stoon, the superior Jarl of Falkreath, and my personal favorite Stormcloak Jarl. Dengir was originally the Jarl Falkreath, but was forced to step down because of his sympathies for the Stormcloaks, and because of that, Sidgir took his place. Because of this, he's very paranoid and believes that everyone, including people like his best friend Laud, conspire against him. But even though he is paranoid, it's very clear that he cares about the people of Falkreath and their safety, which you can tell from his dialogue, and he says straight up to you that he won't waste money on fancy clothes or expensive mead. While Dengir does have sympathies for the Stormcloaks, he admits that he isn't blind or naive like some of the Jarl other Jarls, and truly believes that Ulfric is selfish and power-hungry, but claims he's the devil I know, which, honestly, I can respect. Additionally, he also watches over one of his ancestors' graves, which is home to a vampire within, and he actually escapes and he tasks you, the character, with killing his ancient ancestor. And I think that's also really cool that on top of all this, he also guards an ancient vampire, like, grave site. He's just really cool. One of my favorite Jarls in the game. Love Dengir a lot. Number six, Kraldar. I really like Kraldar. He's a good man who has dreams for the city of Winterhold, and while a bit too optimistic, his attitude is just exactly what this absolutely de desolate city needs. Kraldar also understands that the city needs to have a good relationship with the College of Winterhold in order for it to succeed in the future. He is one of the more generic Jarls in the game, but... I just love his attitude and kind of wish that he could be in charge of a much more prominent city because he he would be a great Jarl in my opinion. Number 5, Jarl Idgrid of Morthal is one of the mystic Jarls and is possibly the only Jarl to have magical abilities. Idgrid has the ability to manipulate Magicka in order to see glimpses of the future, and because of this and her experience and age, she is really wise unlike most of the other Jarls in the game. She is, however, often at odds with her people and has a much more laissez-faire attitude when it comes to ruling and the petty issues that her people have. Whether that's a good way to rule Morthal, I don't know, maybe it works, maybe revisions are right and that's the best way, I'm not sure. Idgrid, like Balgruf the Greater, also doesn't give much of a damn about the war and sees trusting the Thalmor to be bullshit and pure folly. Also, while slightly unrelated, I do have a theory that Idgrid's husband, Asulfur, is actually a thrall of Idgrid. I have nothing concrete to prove any of the delusions I'm saying, but I've always found it odd that Asulfur, who appears to be middle-aged or possibly younger, is married to Idgrid, who is much, much, much older. Just a theory. Um, if Camelworks is watching this, make a video about it, or I will. I don't know. Anyways, next Jarl. Number four. Brina Merilus is a retired Imperial Legate who is basically the Jarl version of Legate Ricca. Better than Skald the Elder in every single way, when she is Jarl, she focuses more on defending the city against dragon attacks and other attacks, and also plays to people's strengths, like the court wizard who refuses to kill again. Brina will instead have her tend to the wounded in case of attack. Very competent seeming Jarl with her years in the Legion, and without a doubt, the best choice for Dawnstar. There isn't a lot about Brina, but because of how she's a veteran and a lot of a no-nonsense character, I think she deserves this spot as a very competent Jarl. Number three, Vignar Greymane is part of the old and well-respected Greymane family and served in the Legion for 30 years, and on top of that is also a member of the Companions. One of the much more storied Jarls, he is rather bitter. However, if he becomes Jarl, he's very competent and will make sure that the city is repaired and the sick are tended to. 
He also has plans um, to add to Whiterun, like making a temple of Talos and puts everyone's favorite preacher, Heimsker, in charge of it. Vignar Greymane is rather cool. Maybe he's not number three. Maybe. Um, but I like him. I like him a lot. He's one of my uh, favorite uh, Stormcloak Jarls, aside from Dengear. And I think he's just very competent, uh, but not as competent as everyone's favorite Jarl. Number two. What can I say about everyone's favorite Jarl Ballin? One of the most politically aware and cautious Jarls, he stays neutral in the war and focuses more on defending the city and the people of his hold. When it comes to dragons and other attacks, Balgruf says that through constant planning and good vigilance and working with his court wizard Farangar, he can keep his city safe. Additionally, after getting to capture a fucking dragon in his city, I believe him. The Skyrim Game Guide also describes that Balgruf is one of the truest Nords in all of Skyrim. And I mean, how can you refute that? Just look at his face. He also sneaks down to the Bannered Mare so he could drink with his fellow subjects. Like, he's, he's just so great. He's so lovable. He loves his people. He loves his city. God damn it, I love Yao Balgruf so much. Number one. Brunewolf Freewinter. Now, 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 before you get upset that I put Brunewolf Freewinter above Balgruf the Greater, hear me out. Brunewolf Freewinter is the replacement Jarl of Windhelm, and unlike Ulfric, he has plans to renovate the Grey Quarter, although he doesn't necessarily have the resources needed because they were all spent on the Civil War. What makes Brunewolf rise from the rest of the Jarls is how he has this gift of foresight, politically speaking, where he's able to see that too much progressive change in Windhelm could create backlash, which is why he still has the Argonians live on the docks. It's grim and not the best, but his reasonings are genuine. He is a man that simply wants the citizenry to go about their day and keeps his oaths that he has made to the Dunmer people and the Argonians and hopes that once prejudice has subsided, all people can be welcome in Windhelm. He's one of the nicest and kindest leaders that just refuses to back down from a challenge. And there you have it. I have now ranked all 17 potential Jarls. Now, you probably disagree with some of my choices. Honestly, looking back, I kind of disagree with a few of my choices, but that's because I'm nitpicky like that. Honestly, when it comes to ranking the Jarls, I don't really feel like there's actually a specific ranking. I feel like there's just three categories you can choose from shit mid and the best ultimately i think that's just how it is so the ranking is a little disingenuous and looking back that means that the hours of work i put into this video are for nothing but i think it was great and hopefully you enjoy this type of content also i know that my last video where i did a skit did tremendously well so do keep in mind that i will be making more skits on the future but I want to be more, I want to have more variety and I don't want to be tied down to one specific thing, especially whenever I start doing more Starfield content, which I plan on doing in the future. So with that being said, if you like the video, like the video. If you subscribe the video, subscribe the video, and I will see you all lawmen in the next video. This has been Master Telvani signing out.